very, very interested uh, also to learn uh, more about your project because um, the, the uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, the school book production in an, uh, uh, especially in a colonial setting, uh, something that I find uh, very interesting. Yeah, because that is also where in uh, the so-called modern meets the tradition, traditional, yes. and then there is naturalization happening. So, I mean, I, I'm interested in all this right now. So I um, would certainly like to share more. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Haruna. Uh, Dr. Sainaba, uh, you wanted to, I am not sure her connections. Uh, no, she has left. Sorry. Dr. Sarma, you yeah. wanted to ask something. SAS Sarma. Hello, good evening to all. Uh, hi. Uh, I don't know, maybe I missed it in the beginning in the presentation. One of the texts that I uh, I hope I am. You are able to hear me, no? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, fine, fine, Bob. Thank you. Uh, I think one of the texts that could be included, maybe in, you included, and I missed to notice it. That is the Maya Sangraha, which is not uh, popularly mm -hmm. known, uh, but we have a manuscript from Kathmandu, and also there is a commentary. And uh, in uh, in our recent publication on the uh, architecture, so Libby had provided the. Uh, one chapter of this text and also its translation. So this is a, uh, if you see the Tandra text uh, on architecture, whenever they quote, uh, they usually you see Maya Mata, not Maya Sangraha, right. but the text that are pre 12th century, they used to quote uh, Maya, uh, this Maya Sangraha. And mm -hmm. also in the Chaturvarga Chindamani that uh, somebody had asked and also you mentioned again and again, you find a quotation, you find quotations from my Sangraha too. So it will be good to consider this text also in your list if it is not included. Mm -hmm. uh, then second point is uh, you mentioned the architectural parts in Puranas and other literary mm -hmm. uh, works, but the Tandra also need to be, could be mentioned if it is not yes, mentioned. Of course. Oh. And uh, especially Kerala text, I think they give a lot of importance for architectural matter while they deal with the ritual text. And uh, Tandra Samuchya is an extraordinary example. And mm -hmm. if you are interested with the Vastu and architecture, you should uh, see the work by one Malaya published. Many don't know this publication. Malaya published from Annamalai University. So he purely took up the second chapter of Tandra Samuchya and uh, worked on it and there's a publication available that will be useful okay. anyway thank you so much it was nice listening to you thanks a lot thank, thank you. you thank you yeah dr sainabai can you try uh no she wanted to ask something she is from trivandrum from the oriental research mm -hmm. institute so i was so but her connection uh, uh, there is a network error okay anyone else uh like to ask anything? Uh, maybe for uh, 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 Babu, can I make one more point? Please do. Yeah. Yes, please. yes, yes. No, because uh, he mentioned about uh, Manishyale Chandrika again and again. Mm -hmm. So the interesting part, what I uh, found there is uh, this author, the Nilagantha, is mentioning that he used Maya Mata Yugalam. He is telling. Uh, so mm -hmm. in, the, in the beginning of the text, if you see, he is quoting more than eight, nine texts that he used for uh, he used as source text for his work, and there you will find a term called Maya Mata Yugala. So mostly Maya Mata is mentioned, but we don't know what is the second work uh, by Maya. So I thought it could be Maya Sangraha, uh, which he might have known through Chaturvarga Chindamani. Thank you. Yeah, that's in, in uh, stanza uh, seven, I think, after the uh, uh, text here. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. If you, you, you can find there on uh, Maya Mata Yugala. I have written mm -hmm. an article, but I have not published. So that uh, I was trying to explore the different text he used. Yeah. But I would also be very interested to to uh, uh, learn more about that when the when the article is. Uh, I can uh, share you. It is a pre uh, it's not published, but I can share you that. Thank you. That will be very good. Cool. I have your yeah. mail ID. I will share you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. 
Babu, I have a question. Yes, sir. Please. Yeah. Uh, you know, from the linguistic point of view, mm -hmm. are there any purely vernacular Vastavidya treatises? So mostly we think that um, these Vastavidyas are uh, original is Sanskrit and the mm -hmm. second is uh, vernacular. But as far as the southern languages are concerned, particularly Tamil, uh, there's a lot of difference between Sanskrit and Tamil. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about uh, the Gujarat and Maharashtra things because they are closer to Sanskrit or uh, mm -hmm. they have mostly Sanskrit vocabulary. Can you point out any purely vernacular treatise, original treatise, which was mm -hmm. picked up by the Sanskritists and made into Sanskrit treatise? Is there any such a possibility? Um, not as far as I know. Uh, the only um, original compositions um, that I know are from, from the Kathmandu are in Nepal and usually not later translated into, into so in a, in, a, in a northern context, I mean. Um, as far as I know, in um, Maharashtra and in uh, uh, Gujarat and Rajasthan, etc., um, the extant Vastu Shastras were usually originally written in, in Sanskrit. And not even in um, what I call vernacular Sanskrit. You know, there, are, there are also texts um, where you can clearly see a, 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 a Gujarati or Marathi or Bhojpuri substratum or Nivari, uh, Nivan. Uh, but that is not usually the case in the in the Vastu Shastra. It's quite the contrary. Some of them um, are stylistically very simple, but some, especially uh, one of the, the the texts written by Sutra Dhara Mandana, the the um, Raja Vallabha Vastu Shastra is written in very um, complicated in very complex meters and in a very highly Highly polished Sanskrit. So, in the in a northern context, there are no indications for a for a transfer from uh, vernacular to to Sanskrit. At least, uh, not that any 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 traces of that can be found. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, comments, questions? Suraj, want to ask something? Suraj worked on the Manusha uh, Chandrika and he still continues to work on that. Anyway, so thank you. Uh, and uh, so thanks for pointing out to the possibility of uh, looking at uh, Nevar and uh, Odia uh, sources. In fact, we are almost in the final stages of publishing a, a descriptive catalog of Odia manuscripts. Uh, Oh, okay. thing. So there is a lot of it which is uh, on the Silparatna Kosha and the Silparatna. So so mm -hmm. probably we will seek you out to see you know if we can continue this conversation. And thank you once again for joining and hopefully we'll be in touch. Uh, Roy, you want to say? Uh, no, just thank you again. I mean, the, uh, I, I can I can just say that. Um, uh, uh, I read parts of, of, of your PhD in German now. Reading in German is still quite painful for me. So the fact that I, I actually managed to read it means that it is a good and interesting uh, thing. And I hope that some sometimes some sort of English version becomes available for wider readerships. Uh, uh, so um, yeah, it was uh, very inspiring. And I'm, I'm, thank you very much again for uh, uh, sharing this with us. Thank you very much for the for the uh, for the compliment. Um, yeah, I, I have an English version on the on the uh, pretty much on the back burner uh, uh, right now, but I, I continue to to be working on that from from time to time. I will uh, definitely uh, let you know as soon as anything uh, tangible uh, is there. And yeah, thank you very much for uh, having me today in this group, and um, I hope we'll we'll be in touch. Yeah, thank you. So thank you, everyone. And probably uh, our next 
uh, talk in the series uh, in a few weeks time from now uh, we're trying to ask uh, Serafina Kumo to speak about a work on uh, account keeping uh, numeracy and democracy in classical Latin mm-hmm. since some of her work is also based on inscriptions and the men uh, and the measurements you we can find in the inscriptions they're trying to make the connections between numeracy and democracy in the particularly in the context of empires uh, which the inscriptions uh, talk about so so i will keep you all posted shortly and thank you once again for coming thank you see you all thank you yeah thank you